So welcome back tonight. I'm going to talk to you from Ezekiel. We're going to talk about, uh, I had been talking to you a couple days ago about Ezekiel 28, which is a picture of the fall of the of Satan and Lucifer. And um, these are the great, you know, we talked about the pride that Lucifer had. And he was, uh, he's had the three great, the three I am's. And, and I talked about that a couple of days ago and, uh, and I just going to kind of go back. I wanted to go through the end of 28 because we kind of stopped with the pride and kind of went over, you know, the pride of saying how it's going to be done and what we're going to do instead of yielding to the Holy Spirit in his direction in our life. I, I know I've told you this before, and I'm sure that you know it, but uh, that after you've been born again, uh, you uh, now the, the Holy Spirit is lives on the inside of you the number one way that we are led as the sons is by the unction of the holy spirit and that unction will line up with the word but doesn't always you can't always find it in the word but there is an unction a leading from here not here and you have as his sons and as his people in this hour is it's vital that we are led the sons are led by the Spirit of God that you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you by a the unction a quickening in your whole in inside of you you can uh, dismiss things by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit reads things picks up things that you don't really catch in the natural we've had Pastor Kevin and I have had countless situations where we'll be talking with somebody or in a situation and listening to a lot of different situations and things that people are saying and that that night we'll go back home and and we picked up in the spirit it something that our natural eyes didn't see and our and natural ears didn't hear but the holy spirit was was alert and he was saying he is truth right and he doesn't lie and he will show you and warn you of when there are people things are uh, they say are true i had a situation a few months back where some people were here and they were saying all of these things and i and and I was just like when I when they left, I thought, Lord, boy, I really haven't done anything. These people have done all this, and and um, you know, he knew what I was asking the Lord. Like, wow, did I really miss my life and you not serving you? And and I went to bed that night, and the Holy Spirit working on me through the night said they were not telling the truth. They were not. They were not truthful. And so when I woke up the next morning, the Lord had ministered to me that, that they were not truthful. That was not true what they were saying. And so what was so wonderful is I didn't have to pick up any of all they said. If I didn't have to determine exactly what it was, I didn't need to know, but I needed to basically whatever they were saying wasn't true. So I didn't need to be uh, uh, um, feeling guilty. I shouldn't be establishing a change of direction because what they were saying, uh, even though it sounded really great, it wasn't accurate. It wasn't truth. Amen. And that is so, isn't that wonderful that the Holy Spirit can speak to you about situations, even, you know, in business uh, when we go into a business situation and it might sound great in on the package, but then we give it to present it to the Lord. We're not just going to charge off and do it. And we say, Lord, what do you say about this situation? Amen. And so in the, in this passage here in Jeremiah 20, 20, um, eight, we're in Ezekiel, I'm sorry, 28, because because if you follow the chronological, I have a couple Bibles here. This is the chronological Bible. You can get one. Um, you can buy them. And what it does is it puts the books all in order of time frame in the, Bi in the Bible instead of in their books. Like this Bible is written. And we have the New Testament and the Old Testament in the books of the Bible. But this will put it in a great, in the time frame, the different things that are going on. And so, like I said at the beginning of the study on Ezekiel, the, uh, the counterparts of Ezekiel at the same time, his counterparts were Daniel, were Jeremiah, were Habakkuk, 
Um, and so they were all the contemporaries and they were all operating at the same time and so, as, as Ezekiel was prophesying, Jeremiah was prophesying and things were happening all at the same time that the, that book was written. And so I've integrated into some of the, the things that we've talked about, some of the different scriptures. And so as we go into, uh, Ezekiel 28 or finish and back up to the end of Ezekiel 28, he's talking about the, the demise and 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 the king of Ty brought being brought down Satan being taken down hallelujah and he was through Jesus Christ amen because Jesus went into hell and took to captivity captive and he got the keys to death hell and the grave and he presented his he took the keys amen to death hell and the grave and he left hell now he went he he died he, a horrible death for the sins for our flesh but then he went into hell he marched into hell and he vanquished every demonic Every low devil, every demonic, every demonic power, every demonic, uh, diabolical, uh, 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 power. He went all the way into the very lowest, lowest depths of hell and he vanquished every foe and he got the keys for you and I to death, hell, and the grave. And then he came up, he got his blood, amen. And he took his blood. He said to Mary, don't touch me for I haven't ascended to the father. He took that blood. He had to capture it. Isn't it something? He cat all that blood. The angels mentioned captured all that blood and he collected all that blood and he went to heaven. Amen. And he presented the blood into the very holy of holies. Amen. So the access would be made for you and I for ever hallelujah that we could go in no matter what devil has tried to take us out no matter how many times we've been ensnared by a trap of demonic influences that the blood speaks a better word for you and i and because of that blood we can go in confidence because that blood purchased our redemption so he picked up that blood the crimson flood of that blood it was the very blood of god it was sin Endless blood. It wasn't the blood that we have because we've all been born in the curse of Adam. But Jesus, when we accepted Jesus, we got a new blood. We got the blood of the covenant. Amen. That covers us and cleanses us and purifies us. Amen. So Jesus picked up his blood. It was collected by angels. He went to heaven. He presented the blood and then he came back and met them in the upper room. All that was done in, in the space of within 24 hours because he visited them that night if you follow the scriptures and so god that god's timetable is are is different you know than our time timetables and, and and so but as we look in ezekiel 28 and we see here that he's at the same time he's coming against satan he's talking about the restoration of israel the restoration of his people even though we go through these testings and even though it looks like we're not going to make it this time i tell you jesus is always about restoration when we call upon the name of Jesus, when we look to him, when we look to him and not ourselves trying to work out this righteousness in our own works, in our own capacity, when we call upon Jesus, he meets us and he's the way maker. He made the way through the Red Sea and it is only the blood that makes a way for you and I to get to the other side of this conflict that we're in. And if you think there's any other way to get through it, but through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Christ, you're mistaken. I just want you to know it's not anything that we do, but all that he has done and our faith and our confidence that it was more than enough. And he has more than enough for you and I in every situation. So here he's here. This, there is a destruction that was going to be pro this prophesied that's going to come to Israel. But then there's a restoration that he promises and he comes against Zidon. Yes. And Zidon is Lebanon. And see in verse 25, he talks about the restoration of Israel, but he talks about the curse against Lebanon. And so I can't tell you what timetable we're in, but I know that no matter what go, goes on in our life, God is about our restoration. He's about raising us from the dead. And you're never too dead for a resurrection. You're never too far gone that God can't raise you up. I tell you, we are in the Caleb generation. We are in the generation that says that I, I am as strong today as the first 
first day that you called me. Amen. And you might be 86 today or 85 today like Caleb, but I tell you, if you will get in your mouth, I am strong, as strong today as when I was first called. Amen. And that because the strength comes not from our physical body, but the quickening of the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why uh, Elijah could outrun the chariot. It wasn't because he was strong, but he was strong in the power of the Almighty God. And that anointing gave him the power to outrun a chariot. Amen. He could, he, he, that, that anointing and that empowerment of the Holy Ghost is upon you in this hour if you will draw on it and if you will place a demand on it for this hour to run the race, to finish what he he has for you to do, for me to do, because he is the God of restoration. I tell you, he has restored things that I have stood and believed for many years that God was going to do in the face of situations. You know, he has it prom in uh, Habakkuk. He says that he, though there be no fruit on the vine and though the olive tree fail, yet I will rejoice in the Lord God, my strength. He is my Lord God and he makes my feet like hinds feet and he makes me to walk on my high places. So there's a high place that you have to walk on that he's chosen specifically for you to go up higher in him for another level of, of authority, another level of teach, another level to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. I didn't pick the high places that he has for you to walk. They look different for you than they do for me, but I tell you, he has determined some places that he wants us to come up because he desires for us to not just rule in this realm, and have authority in this realm, but for us to rule in the future and over universes and other things when we get to heaven. I tell you, this is just one level. Hallelujah. And he has greater levels. Who knows what we're going to be in charge of, but we prove it here in this realm. And so if you look here in um, verse 25 of Ezekiel 28, let's just go over there. He says, um, hallelujah. That was actually uh, 27. It says, um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Rabba Sakara 25. Let me get to it. Here we are. Uh, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 28, 25. And it says, um, uh, verse 21, Son of man, set your face against Zidon and prophesy against Lebanon. You know, he will tell you to prophesy against enemies that are coming against you. And see, so many things people think that the, when it says in the New Testament, in the book of James, that you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you resist the devil and he will flee. You know, people don't even believe you really resist the devil. But here you can see in the Old Testament that he was told to prophesy against enemies enemies coming against Israel. And so here he says, prophesy and set your face against Sidon and prophesy, speak to that devil, speak to that, that ruler, speak to that country. And it says, say to thus says the Lord, behold, I am against you. Amen. You, who are you, you mountain of human obstacles against me in Jesus name. Amen. You have become a molehill. Have you ever done that? I've done that. When situations are coming, I will speak to those mountains. I'll say, you are a molehill. You're trying to exalt yourself. Like me, others, you're trying to exalt yourself as if you are stronger than the name of Jesus and the authority that I have. And so I will speak to that uh, mountain of uh, obstacle that seems a lot of times it'll be a spirit. It'll be a, it'll be a situation that uh, a, 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 a demonic assignment against set against our family is set against our destiny set against to try to trip us up. I'll speak to that mountain and I'll say, who are you uh, against the Lord almighty? i speak to you. You are a molehill in Jesus name. We are told in the New Testament to speak to that mountain and, it sh and tell it to be removed. And if you don't have any, if you have if you have faith and you believe it will be done for you, well, you, these mountains, sometimes it might not be a mountain in a mountainside, but they are certainly mountains that are trying to hinder you from going forward into all that God has laid up for you. So you've got to get in the, get in the position that you have been given that authority through the name of Jesus to speak to those and curse those things that are coming against you and rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I tell you, if you can't get it in your mouth, if you 
you can't start to say it. Just start at home. You don't need to be out with anybody. Just start saying it in your in your private personal. Because if you can't do it in the secret place, you're not going to be doing it out there. So start small. Start where you are at home and start speaking against those circumstances that have lined themselves up against you. Curse that that uh, infection that's come against your body. Curse that that uh, that continual attack on your health. In the name of Jesus, you bind it. You send it back to hell in Jesus' name. And that's and that is what we do if we really believe that the name of Jesus has been given to us and that He has given us authority to use the name of Jesus and bind the works and the attacks upon our health, upon our family, upon our finances, upon this nation, upon your neighbors. We have got to stay, make a standard, raise up a hedge, raise up a standard against the enemy. If you don't do it, nobody who's going to do it. You have got to do it. You you have got to take your place on the wall. Stand for Jesus. Amen. Let's go on. It says, and so he says, I'm set myself against Zion. He says, thus says the Lord, behold, I'm against you, Zion. And I will be glorified. I am against you. I will be glorified in the midst of you. In other words, God is going to show up, Satan. God is going to show up and he's going to, uh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And he is in me. And I tell you, he's going to change situations. And this time, when he when when he's talking about, I will be glorified. You know what it meant for that country? It meant that destruction was coming because God was going to be glorified in the midst of that situation. And you can be assured that when you send the name of Jesus into those situations of demonic uh, oppression that's trying to take your city out, trying to take that area. But see, so if you keep saying that it is a, that it that we've been defeated and you keep speaking uh, the curses on you and, and you can't do this and, and, it's, and you're going to stay. If you can't change your confession and get it lined up with the word of God, you're going to continue to see what you say. So you have to watch your words. You have to declare and you have to decree and you have to prophesy the words of the Lord. And I believe that there is a coming restoration of this nation. He's given it to me from Jeremiah uh, uh, 20, uh, 32. He's promised me that he is bringing this place, this nation, a health, health and a cure. Amen. Not just for my body, not just for my family, but for this nation. Amen. And so he is going to restore, even if he slays us, even if he cuts off that arm, even if he cuts off that situation that you've been in, that you that you like, but he's all of a sudden it's been cut off. I know family, churches, ministers have, have lost churches, but you know what? It wasn't brick and mortar that you were established in. You were established in the in the anointing and in the word of God. He is the true foundation. It is not brick and mortar. Look at Jerusalem and Israel. Look at them. They lost lost everything. They went in and tore it up. They burned the altar. They burned Jerusalem. They burned all those areas. They took all the holy things out and they presented. But see, we in the new covenant believers that we are, we know that the kingdom is not a building. The kingdom of God is within us. The spirit of the living God is in us. The church is within us. It is not a building. It is not brick and mortar. And I know in this season, as we have seen people lose churches, pastors lose churches, situations change. And this is a testing of a lot of people because if you think it's about a building, if you think it's about the, the how it looks like that, how it looks or how you think it's supposed to look, uh, he's going to change. You will rely on anything that is not the power of the almighty God and the true foundation that has been established on Jesus Christ as our chief cornerstone. If it is established in anything other than that, it is not going to stand it will not remain and because everything that can be shaken will be shaken until those things that are in him shall be uh only those things that it in him will remain and he is gathering his people he has a remnant he has a remnant and you know his remnant is his remnant and they don't look like how you think they're going to look and they might not talk like how you're going to talk but they are the sons because they are led by the spirit and it's not a Baptist Presbyterian Pentecostal Assembly of God uh, Seventh Day Adventist it is the church it is not a Catholic it is the church the glorious church is rising up she is becoming she is laying aside those things 
things that, that, that beset her. And she is rising up greater and more glorious in this hour than ever before. There is gross darkness has been covering the earth, but the glory of the Lord is risen upon you as the believer. And so we, we welcome this, the refiner fire to burn out the dross, to change our minds, pray as we did yesterday, free us God from unconscious and presumptuous sins that they may not have dominion over us. I tell you, I don't want to have pr presumptuous and think I know how to do it and think I have the answers. I tell you, cause he's doing a thing in this hour that if I told you, you would not believe it. He's going about it in a way that we could never predict. He's doing a work that if you, we, if the, uh, we didn't even read and understand what the prophets were meaning. And when we open it now, now it's coming to pass. I tell you, I think he's, he's doing things that we don't even understand. Amen. And so he's, and he's about restoration. So in this, in this passage here, it says, I will be glorified. Verse 22, in the midst of you, he will be glorified in the midst of you. You allow him to change you. You allow him to do a work on the inside. You can't say I've got enough oil. You don't have enough oil because we've got to have fresh oil for this year. We have to have fresh oil. We have to have a new wine skin. Amen. And some of us that are a little older, we know how much we need to be glorified from the inside out. Amen. How we need to have our bodies changed and not healed by surgeries, healed by the glory of God coming upon us and doing a work that only the Holy Ghost can do. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, I will be glorified in the midst of you and they shall know that I am the Lord and what I have executed judgment in her and be sanctified in her. He needs you to let uh, allow him to be sanctified and holy in you and turn from our wicked ways and, he, and, and ask him. He will heal our land. I know he is healing it whether you think he is or not, but I know that he's promised that if I do certain things that he will heal this land and I have done my best and I'm still working on it. Amen. To do the turn from my wicked ways, to hear from heaven, to let him renew my mind, to get out of my, my stinking thinking of, of what I picked up from the traditions of man that nullify the word of God and render it of non effect. I mean, we pick up these ideas of how church is supposed to be and we want to honor the Lord and we should honor the Lord. But when those override the spirit of the living God, when he comes in, then those traditions have made void. The word, the power is not effective anymore. So we don't, we don't hold to traditions. If they nullify the word of God and they render it of non-effect in our lives, amen. We don't want to pick up wives' tales and things and, and traditions of, 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 of generations of, of, mindsets. We cannot be locked into mindsets of my, what my parents taught you or what you parents taught you. If it isn't lined up with this word, we've got to tear it down. We've got to cast down every imagination and every vain thought and every thought and bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. And that is this word. This is the sure word of prophecy. It's more sure than an angel in front of me tonight or I feel like it. I sense the anointing. It has nothing to do with whether you really sense it because we as Christ's people, now we've, we've come into his kingdom and we are not led by the sense realm knowledge. We are run, we are led by the spirit realm knowledge. We are not to be, be led by what we see, what we touch, what we taste, what we, what we feel even anymore. We are to be led by the spirit of the living God, Christ being formed in us. And that is this glorious church that he is raising up, rising up. Hallelujah. It is on the increase. And it doesn't matter if you don't have a building. And it doesn't matter if you don't have a car. And it doesn't matter if you don't have any money in your account because the greater prosperity of God rises big on the inside of you. And, and you can call those things that be not as though they 
were and they will become. You call in the needs that you have. You call in that that money. You call in. I tell you, if a God, if God can send a raven to feed uh, in an Old Testament prophet by the brook chair, you can bet he can bring somebody to feed you. And if you're expecting get your WIC program or your government program to be the one that is your head and the one that you're looking to, but you better get your eyes off of that. You better get your eyes on your where your help comes from and who your Jehovah uh, Jireh is because he is the Lord God, the, the one who provides. It is not man. He might use a man over here, but you don't rely on the arm of the flesh. And that's what just happened with Egypt. They relied. They said, I can do this. I can go to Egypt and I can learn their ways and I can sit in the government and I can rely on the government to provide for me and that government is not our that is not our Lord that is not our Savior he he is the Lord our Redeemer he is our kinsman Redeemer it is not our government it is not subsidy it is not social security it is not any of those things and you've got to get that I tell you you have got to start to use your faith in Jesus in the author and the finisher of our faith who is Jesus Christ amen and so there is a restoration coming. It might not come to your house, but it's coming to my house. Amen. And I've seen some restoration of some things that were lost, but I'm not going to stop until he restores it all. I say I am not going to stop until he restores it all. He is going to restore it all. Hallelujah. All those things that were taken by the devil. He is, I say, restore, 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 restore those children restore the grandchildren, restore their callings, restore their assignments. I don't care where they are. I don't care if they're in prison. I don't care if they're in, in me messed up on drugs. I don't care where you think they are or how far deep they've been caught in the demonic realm. But Jesus marched into hell for you and I. He went into the very lowest depths of hell. And that is my victory. It's not a, it's not a counseling program. It is the power of Jesus Christ to run resurrect people from the dead to bring them out of prison just like Jesus paid the price and got the keys to death hell and the grave and if you if your mindset it is on the six step process of how to counsel people and not the delivering power of the Holy Ghost to deliver people from from drug abuse and that then you better get your mind renewed and start reading your Bible again and get your attention over here because there's there's more things coming and if you don't start speaking and then cursing those mountain of obstacles that are coming against you and rebuking them in the name of Jesus, you're going to be taken out. You have got to align and you say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and do what he says to do, which he says, I've given you with the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy in Jesus name. That's the same understanding that Paul had when he got bit by that snake after he had been out in that hurricane and been beaten and ship and out there for days attacked by a demon spirit amen he was keeping them from getting to the next step but he had already seen jesus he had already seen his future he had already seen what god was gonna do and when that snake bit him he just shook it off he just shook it off and you gotta shake off some stuff you gotta shake off whatever's been biting you and you've just been uh, whining over that bite whining over that shake it off you you know, this COVID business, I, I get it. I get that. It, but you know what? It's not Jesus. We have already been healed. We've already been delivered. And if you, the more power you give to that, like cancer or any other disease, the more you feed it, the more it's going to take ascendancy. But when you start to curse it and you start to come against those symptoms, you when you, when the when the devil starts to warn you about something, you immediately you start to resist it in the name of Jesus. When you have a symptom, and you don't just take it. You resist it in Jesus' name. It's the same with cancer. It's the same over here with a common cold. It's the same. But if you haven't done it here and you haven't done it in the small things, you won't do it in the day of visitation because this is a day of visitation. 
and then it's going to be it's going to be well for some and it's not going to be well for others because we should have been learning and we should have been acting and we should have been moving forward and taking our authority and he has given it to you in Jesus name there is a restoration is it going to come to everybody Probably not because they're not believing for it. They're going to say we're going to be in the curse. They're going to say we're going to be doing this. And Ezekiel was told to prophesy. He was told to do certain things and to say things against kings, against leaders. Are you taking authority over the principalities that are working the government of your city and the government or, or the uh, municipality around you? Are you raising a hedge of protection about that, that neighborhood, about your little area? Area, uh, uh, if it's St. Pete or if it's uh, Jacksonville or wherever it is, are you lift with your mouth to, raising up a hedge of the blood of Jesus about it? Or, or are you taking the oil if it says march down the street and put oil down the street? Are you doing it? Are you following the, uh, the unctions of the Holy Ghost? Ezekiel, he did some crazy stuff. I tell you, there's people doing some crazy stuff, but by faith, they're doing it and God is responding to their simple things. I tell you, when the COVID came out, the Lord, year, a year before COVID in 2019, the Holy Spirit um, uh, told us uh, to, uh, at the love lunch, he said, I want you to make a salt covenant. I want you to do a salt covenant. And so all the women, when we came together, we poured the salt. We put the salt in this container and I had it in the church for the whole year. Just the Lord just said to do it. And I'm like, so I had a little beautiful canister with all the salt. All the women put their salt in so we could be unified. Amen. All of the salt. It never can be broken. Amen. So the Lord says, okay, uh, with the sister in the Lord, um, we're to get together and pray. And we were supposed to meet in South Tampa. And the Lord says, I want you. Uh, he gives me that morning. I know I'm supposed to meet her. Didn't know exactly where we were going to meet. Hadn't been down that area in a while. So I'm going to meet her at Ballast Point. The Lord says, um, I want you to, he gives me the scripture. It's in, I think it's in Kings, where the, where the prophet was told to put salt in the water. And it was going to purify the water. And so I looked for it found it and I wasn't, didn't know I was going to talk about tonight. So I said, Lord, I said, you've given me the scripture. Well, where's the salt? What salt do you want me? To? And the Lord said, you already, I already had instructed you to put that salt in that flask, uh, at the, at the love luncheon a year earlier. I'm like, and it's been in the, in the sanctuary under the anointing in those meetings for all that time. And he said, I want you to take that I want you to go down with your sister and I want you to pour that in Tampa Bay. Hallelujah for the healing of the nations. Hallelujah. I tell you, you can laugh at me. You can, and, and, and then continue the things continue to happen with COVID and all those situations. But you know what? God has promised. He doesn't tell you to sow a seed here without you, you bringing forth a harvest. So even though the COVID situation went as it did and the whatever, I knew that we did what we were supposed to do that a year earlier, he had told me to collect that Salt. I'd never done a salt covenant. I'd heard of it, but it was the Lord sent me, just like He told Ezekiel to do these things. But see, see what happens is you've done things for the, your city. You've done things. You did things. You fasted. You prayed. You stood in, and you dug up your seed with your mouth. And it's time for you to repent and go back and say, Lord, we stood. We com we we we. We asked and we petitioned you and we say, restore, restore, restore. You promised us restoration and we are not going to quit until you bring it to pass as we have asked you to do. And though it has been uh, five years or 
30 years or 50 years that you've been standing. Don't you weary in well-doing for you shall reap if you weep. If you faint not, you continue because you, you, will, you will see your salvation before you go to heaven. You saw, you're not going to be looking from here down. You're going to see it in this realm. Amen. And so I, I encourage you as you live, as you, as you study the word and we go through Ezekiel, there's a lot of curses and a lot of things that are going to happen. Curses are going to come on people. Curses are going to come on situations. We are to curse demonic influences coming against violence, come on against violence in the city. As we were praying at our, uh, at our meeting last month, during our prayer saturation, which is our seven hour prayer meeting that we do, when we were praying within the hours of that meeting, we started praying and they exposed a fifth grader in, in we were praying over the blood of Jesus over the, the state, praying over different situations for the, for the violence and things and praying in the spirit a lot, that they arrested a fifth grader who was getting ready to go in and shoot up a um a, a school hallelujah and the, during that time of prayer god exposed and eradicated a situation right now i don't follow the news a lot but that morning it just happened to pop up amen and we we knew that god had answered our prayers amen god is answering your prayers as you have prayed them many prayers that have gone forth and so don't you stop uh, be weary and well doing for you will reap if you faint not hallelujah but you've got to strengthen yourself in the holy ghost praying in the spirit amen is how you do it you've got to get strengthened in the inner man by the spirit by praying in the spirit reading the word of god our our spirit man has got to be fed by spiritual things not natural things the word of god is spirit it is anointed even if you don't understand it it is life and healing to all of our flesh read psalm 119 he promised is it that it will quicken us we don't even understand how when we read this word it quickens our body because it's not natural it is spirit food amen and he needs you to have your spinach he needs you to have this word working i don't care how many times you've read ezekiel i don't care i don't understand it i have to you know i'm not a, a somebody that studies end time prophecy i'm just going to follow the holy ghost as he shows me to go forward in it amen but there is a restoration that comes. Is it going to come upon everybody? Probably not. Because they're not speaking that it's coming to their house. Come on. You've got to confess of the blood of Jesus. You've got to confess that God. I remember when we went through a difficult time in, 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 in a very uh, difficult season where we had very little money and, and everything. And I, I remember the Lord said, take this gold jewelry that you have. I want you to go down. I want you to melt it. I want you to make it into a, 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 a money ring, a little thing, a money clip. And, and I want you to, I want you to put the date on it. I want you to give it to Pastor Kevin. And it, and it, I had a scripture about that he was prospered, that we were prospered, you know, that he was a prosperous man. And he, he wanted, and Kevin like looked at it and like think, that doesn't really mean much to him, but it wasn't his word for me. It didn't matter what his, how much he thought of it. For me, it was what I was to do in the midst of a situation that was lack. He said, I want you to go and give this to him on this date. Hallelujah. This year, because we are going to have, see that prosperity. Amen. And he has you do some unusual prophetic acts that don't look like, make no sense to anybody else, but but they are for you to mark them and they were maybe you did them 10 years ago or 20 years ago but God said I am going to perform it just like it was years later that things happened for Ezekiel but they were looking they were expecting this word to come to pass they were reading this word they had this word written down and they were gonna they were esteeming that it was going to come to pass and Jeremiah at the same times quoted and so when we look at this passage in 
in G Ezekiel 28, you see that Ezekiel, uh, you see that Jeremiah was, uh, Jeremiah was entered into it. When we got over, uh, second Kings, uh, 25, three through seven, we're inserted in this same reading of Ezekiel 27, uh, I mean, 28. And it says Jeremiah 52 is in there and Jeremiah 39 is in them. So when we read that chronological Bible along with this Bible, it brings into place, you can see that those prophetic words came. And even though Ezekiel said this prophetic word, and then he said this prophetic word at the same time, guess what? Some of them went before the other. They were still prophetic words. So it doesn't fall absolutely line upon line, but the word shall come to pass. Hallelujah. It's going to come to pass. And so in, um, this promise of restoration that he's promised you and I, you better risk, you better be getting that in your mouth that he is going to, we are going to recover all and that we are the head and we are the, not that we are the head and not the tail and you are the top and not the bottom, not because of your color, not because of your car, not because of your diamonds or the city you live in or the friends you have or the church you go to, but it's because the prosperity and the anointing of God is on the inside of you and it is working a, a great power and a great far greater power of far greater glory hallelujah than the demonic and the dark influences that are out there and that glory is risen upon you amen it is getting brighter but you've got to feed that glory you've got to look into this perfect law of liberty we don't we leak we've got to look and examine our hearts and let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn out the chaff. Things that we picked up over the last few years is just disgusting. The mindsets of people because they've been listening, feeding themselves on the weather channel, feeding themselves on the, on the COVID reports, feeding themselves on the political climate, feeding themselves on Black Lives Matter or whatever that was, you know, feeding themselves on the violence of police against this and that or whatever the focus has shifted your attention from, from the word of God and from what he has promised. All you need to get back, renew your mind to the word of God. And he says he is not a respecter of persons. He is a respecter of faith. He is a respecter of those who believe. And he said, even if you've been grafted in, even like Israel, we got to be grafted in because of their disobedience. He said, even though we've been grafted in, he says, I will cut you off if you don't start believing again. So it's time for us to get our faith back on what God has said, not what man has said, not what theologists have said, or theologians have said, or all those things, but get back to the B.I.B. Ali and look at what Jesus did and do the works that Jesus did. He already paid the price for us to have these better promises. They were, this is a better covenant. This is a better covenant filled with better promises. And so we look at Ezekiel, but now we have the Holy Ghost inside of us and he wants to fill you with he, he doesn't want you to have a little dab it's not enough what you got that little bit of tongue talking that you got when you got baptized in the holy ghost you need to develop that because it's a force of righteousness it's a power within you hallelujah but you thought oh it was just a sign and that's all i need no no never no you need to stir yourself up in the holy ghost you pray in the you pray the mysteries you pray that with the understanding you pray with the, with the, the mysteries and then you pray the understanding you sing in the spirit you sing with the, with the, with the understanding you pray in the spirit you pray with the understanding why do i need to do that because you need to prophesy over your situation. You need to prophesy those mysteries or things that are coming are out ahead of you that are preparing the way for you to walk in, showing you. And, and as you pray in the Holy Spirit, they are making a way where there seems to be no way through the Holy Spirit for you, for the mysteries, for your family. We don't even, I could be praying about the future generations, children I have, my children haven't even had, had yet. Hallelujah. As I pray the mysteries, as I pray the bottomless things of God. Amen. And so 
there is a coming restoration and Egypt's pride verse uh, chapter 20 and said the pride I tell you spiritual pride stinks it stinks I tell you you can be so oh we're Pentecostal oh I tell you you can be so dry I went to this Pentecostal church thinking it was going to be filled with the Holy Ghost but it wasn't it wasn't it was it was so dry and caught up on, on the Pentecostal whatever it was that it there was no flow of the Holy Ghost. So you've got to check. You've got to have fresh oil, a fresh anointing for this hour. New one sin. He wants, he wants to change you so that he can put you in a new place, in a new level. He has a greater level of authority for us all to walk in. The, the testings of our faith are to produce. They're not to take us out. They're to produce better fruit. And that's what John 15 says, that we would bear more excellent fruit. So you may think, oh, we lost his over here. No, he wanted to cut that off because you weren't producing. And he has something he needs you to produce that's better than that place. You were on, you were dying over there. They weren't receiving you there. They don't want you there. You So I've got to cut you out of there. I've got to get you over to another place where people will receive you because there are people that are hungry to hear about Jesus, to hear about the power of God. There are people hungry. And guess what? They might not have accepted Jesus yet. The Bible promises that in the last days that they will, he says, I will be found by a people that didn't seek me. There are people on the street. There are people out here on the highways and the byways that they don't even know to call upon Jesus. But then your light will shine in that place. You'll walk and they'll see the light of God on you. I have people tell me all the time, there's such a aura about you. There's, a, I said, it's Jesus. It's not me. It's Jesus. It's not me. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have it too. Amen. It's so he, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Amen. Because it's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost, isn't it? That's what being part of the kingdom is. It's, it's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. And there is no outside of the Holy Ghost living inside of you and you allowing him to take full charge and great, uh, raise up bigger on the inside. There isn't the fullness of that joy. See, the more you, you go to that tradition and you get caught up in assembly of God or Pentecostal or Baptist or Catholic. And the more you get, see, they just want to get, they, they see that freedom of you coming into Jesus. They want to get you contained. Got to get, but it, Boy, I gotta cut, gotta contain that. Boy, they just too much on fire here. Now, Jesus can't talk to you like that. That's what they used to tell me. Oh, the Lord doesn't say that to you. People can't, you can't hear Jesus. No, oh, I, too late. I've already heard him speak to me. He's that still small voice. So I didn't, I wasn't even as a child. I knew that it didn't matter what they said. I knew that Jesus had talked to me. Amen. And don't let somebody tell you that is so religious and has such religious pride that you haven't heard from the Lord. He number one will speak to you by unction. He'll number two speak to you through the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes he'll, he'll give you a sign. I'm not looking always for the signs, but he sometimes he does give me a sign. Isn't that wonderful? Don't you? You know, when that raven dropped that bread for me that day, that was a sign. Hallelujah. That was a, a sign that I am your Jehovah Jireh. I can provide bread from heaven. I can provide for you in famine. Amen. Amen. That was, so, I still have the crumbs. That bread's disintegrated. I still have it in a package because it's a, a, it's a marker. There's markers. There are things that you have sown, brothers and sisters. There's things that you have, you have said, you've declared, you've fasted, you've marched, you stood. And the enemy it looks like try to come right behind you and take it all away. But I tell you, you go back and you remind the Lord. You put him in remembrance of those things that you did. Just like they looked, even though Ezekiel did these crazy things, they looked because they saw that there had been a prophet among them. Amen. And you might be told to do some crazy things. Amen. Just follow the obedient. Just obey the Holy Spirit. Do what he says to do. Don't add. You know, people want to add. 
you know, just like Saul, he wanted to add on David what his own armor. And David's response was, I have not proved these. When God tells you to do something, you do what has exactly what he says to do. I remember years ago, the Lord spoke to me, uh, us to uh, me to have this prayer meeting and to have, give all these ladies a white stone. And um, we were to go to different places in the city and pray. This is back in the 90s. And and um, and so I said, Lord, show me where the stones were. You know, I didn't know where to get these white stones. And then the Lord, supernaturally, this woman who rebuked me for what I was doing, told me where to get the stones. But she was, she came at me in this, in this prayer meeting. You, I rebuke you, what you're doing, na, 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 na. you know what? She could rebuke all she wanted. The Lord has spoken to me and he told me and he even used her to shit, tell me where the stones, that was the last piece I needed. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I knew that the Lord had, had told me to do a specific thing. Do I, have I seen the full manifestation of why God wanted us to do it? In that location, I only did it one time that way. I've prayed in other cities and done different things in other cities, but it was to pray over specific areas on Gun Highway in Tampa Bay. Amen. Hallelujah. I prayed in Sarasota, prayed in Vero Beach, but it was specifically for that time to sow a seed. It was around my birthday in the 90s. I think it was 94, 95. I still have my rock. To remind the Lord, see, see, sometimes it's not, it's more than a, the kids say, you know, long time now, they, their slang is, it's a, it took a minute, you know, it was a minute, you know, it was a minute, but really what they mean is a long time. And it really for a day in the Lord can be a thousand years. Amen. And so though it's been a while coming, I encourage you in those, those restoration scriptures, because I've had these scriptures of restoration back when the Lord gave me prayer, a prayer network back in the early nineties. He gave, talked to me about the restoration. He talked about these scriptures and it is closer today than it was all those years ago when I first got it. I tell you, Psalm 126 is more real today for me and more my reality today than, than, than it was all those years ago. But see, your reality is, this is reality. This truth is real. This is life. This is truth. Amen. And so there is, there is a judgment that, that he said in, in Jeremiah and um, Ezekiel 29, that he was coming against the pride of Egypt, but we can have pride, spiritual pride, not not yielding to the Holy Spirit, thinking that you've been in Jesus so long and you know this and you know that and no, we know we know the word, but we have to be led by the Spirit. Amen. And if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in this hour, you won't be at the crossroad for those people. This is about salvation. This is about people getting saved. This is about people getting set free. And if you're not in the right place at that juncture where he needs you to be, then you won't be able to set free those captives that he has earmarked for you to bring in this last day harvest. Amen. So it's vital that we listen to the nuances and the and the and the changing of assignments because it you we think it's going to be all finished when we leave a, one place it doesn't get 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 over it it's not always wrapped up in a little pretty package and finished because there's many times when we'll be called to do this at the same time we're called to do this in another coast hallelujah and so, and, and but most of you say oh i no, i can't do that because i'm doing no yes you can you because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And is, are you doing it or is he doing it? Because it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. And when you, when he leads you, he provides. He is only the Jehovah Jireh when you obey him and you lay down your Isaac. So what is your Isaac? He didn't ask for Ishmael. He didn't ask for what you've done in the flesh. He's looking for you to lay down what your Isaac is. I have to, I ask myself, Lord, what's my Isaac? What is it that you have given me? I have to examine the ministries, the things, the outworkings of the ministry and, and present them again, Lord. Have you, have you made a shift? Have you turned a page? And I missed you because we can miss it in the going. That's why I have these journals. That's 
why I go back. I've been using the same one. I've got, I go back. I look back to see things that I've, dreams that I've had. Did I miss a dream? Did I miss a prophetic? I'm not looking at some prophetic word somebody gave me. I'm looking at my, my Abba Father, what he gave me. I trust what he's given me from this word, from dreams and visions more than, I, I'm not looking for a prophet. I already have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me, directing and redirecting my course. Hallelujah. He is the heart reader. He is the one that, that gives us visions and shows us, you're missing it over here. You need to get over here. You're missing it in business. You're missing it in your family. Pray. Come against fast. Set yourself aside to hear. Amen. I mean, just last week he had me go on this fast and, and it was by the spirit. Nobody else went on it with me. My husband didn't even sense to go on it with me, but it was a, a sense that there's some changes I've got to, I need to know, I need to be sensitive to know how to change. I've got, I cannot, ch I can't stay the same and you can't stay the same. We have to be changed. And he wants to let us, he wants to sh craft us again. We're back on the wheel, folks. We're back on where the hands of the Lord. And he says, can I, can I make what I want to make out of you? Will you let him allow him to be new, a new vessel form for this hour? Will you let him put his, his, his going to hurt. It's, you're going to feel his fingers on your pulse. You're going to feel it on some some flesh ideas. You're going to feel it on some things you just didn't like. You grew up thinking he's going to put his finger on some things that he needs you to correct because he loves us that much that he is forming and crafting this beautiful object for his glory. Amen. For you to be a vessel for poured out. You may be common, may think you're common. I don't care what. I just want to be a vessel that is <laughs> pours him out out. I don't care where it is. I don't care if it's at a nursing home. I don't care if it's on the street. I don't care if it's giving money to somebody on the street. I don't care if it's at the white house or the pink house or the blue house. I don't care if it's when I have dirt in my nails and sweaty body and filthy and a bad hair day. I just want to be sensitive that when I am on in a setting that I moved by the Holy Spirit. I was at a meeting at a wedding the other night and there's a lot of beautiful things going on. And I feel like the, the, I'm looking, listening for the Holy Spirit. What is it? There was one man there. He got up to give us a, 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 a word, you know, a, a blessing over the couple. And the Lord said, that's, that's him. You need to go over. God's got a plan for that man. His voice. God's going to use his voice. Didn't even had to ask him what his name was. I'd never seen him before. But of all the things that went on, there is a lovely, lovely wedding, lovely situ place. But I wasn't tuned into all of, even though I'm talking pleasantries, I'm tuned in, Lord, what is it? Who is it here? What is it that you have? What, there's got something you have for, for me. It's, it's a wonderful wedding and I'm enjoying all this. But, but what word is it? And it was for that man. Amen. Amen. That man, just because God wants to use that man's voice for God. Amen. I may never see him again. Probably won't ever see him again. Hallelujah. But that's what, where we want to be is sensitive. I'm in this environment. Amen. And if we're too locked up in the form, you know, that's what tradition and, you know, it denies the power. It won't go outside the box if you are so tight and so limited in how God can move. You've just boxed him in. And so we have to allow God to break down. I, I say, God, break, break, break down the, the fallow ground in my heart, Lord, so that I can serve you, Lord, so that I can be a vessel of honor for you, Lord, not to be honored and be put on display because I don't care. And it doesn't matter where you are if, if God's not flowing through you there. Amen. We had a, a house, a beautiful house that God had us build on the ocean. It was 
they I think they were selling it for $28 million. But, you know, when we were in that house, we had a prayer meeting on National Day of Prayer. And we had scriptures on it. And, and God did some things. But there was a the, the presence of the Lord just really, it was upon me because I'm in the place. But it didn't flow like it had in other places. And I remember being out on that balcony and saying, Lord, I want to be where you are. So it doesn't matter what palace you have or what what place you have. It doesn't if a palace or a, a paper box that you're in. But if the presence of the Lord is there, hallelujah, amen, the glory is there, you're in the shadow of the Almighty. And I tell you, I'd rather be in a little cardboard box in the presence of God than being in some Taj Mahal somewhere where people don't have any faith and have no knowledge of him and are empty shirts and empty people and have no desire and and refuse Jesus. And see, God sees that and he's going to send us to people who don't even know him, but they'll be found by him. Amen. And you're the vessel. I'm just not alone. He's raising up the most unusual people to be used in this hour for his glory because he is going to restore this land. He's going to restore your city. He's going to restore your health. He's going to restore your family. Amen. Because he is the God that is faithful to the seed. Amen. He is faithful to you. So get those scriptures back out. When he said, and he promised over your children these promises, you get those back out. I don't care how long they've been in prison. I don't care how long they say that they are never coming out. You start speaking the word. Amen. You start sending that word to their them in prison. You start you start speaking the word to them in prison. You start preaching to them when you talk to them on the phone. You start speaking life back into them. Hallelujah. And you watch and see as they start to praise God in that place. That if he would do it for Paul and Silas when they were in the dungeon and they started praising, you can bet he will still do it for us as they, you start to praise him and you start to worship him. That those prison Doors will, the shaking of those prison walls will come down, I tell you, and God will set not just you free, but a whole nation free, but a whole prison free. How I believe it. I believe this. I believe that God will do these things, but it's in the simple things. It's in the secret place. It's when no one sees that you do that prophetic act. When you do that situation here, he needs to have the seed. It might have been a seed that you sowed like Ezekiel sowed and did um, years earlier, but now it is the due season. Now it is the point of time, and now it is going to spring forth. Amen. So I encourage you, you go back to those things that you have, that you have some of those prophetic acts that you've done, those seeds that you've sown, those, those unusual things that you did in the past and put, remember, put God in remembers. It says that in Isaiah 43, I believe it is. Put me in remembers. Let us plead together. Yes. Yes. Let us plead together. He says, let me, you plead with me and, 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 and be that, that person that is the watchman on the wall. Amen. That's what we'll talk about tomorrow is, is Jesus, uh, uh, Ezekiel was called a watchman and you are a watchman on your field. You're a watchman where God says, act, ask him to show you what your watch, what you're to be watching over in this hour. Ask him to show the field. Is it your family? Is it your family? A lot of us after so many years, we have lots of different hats, lots of different fields, lots of different levels of authority. Apostle Amos, you have levels of authority that you have been ministering in for years. Amen. And, but 
but he has a new season. He has for you to, to um, speak a new, uh, a, a new sit, a word into that situation, or he has for you to bring in a new word to those people in that situation. And, and, but God is faithful to take us to this new season and to a higher level. We're not, we're not down here now. We are going up, but how do we do it? Through humility, through being humble, through not being so caught up in our religious ideas. It's not that I'm not saying that we are not to be honored the Lord for he is holy. And he says that we are to be holy because he is holy. And so I am not disregarding the holiness of God and honoring him. But it is not about a religion. It is not. It is about relationship. And there are people that uh, are, will not come into church because we have made it so hard for them. And so I have to say, Lord, I want to honor you as holy. But I have to receive people that don't know how to honor you as I know how to honor you. Hallelujah. And we and we can't judge them because God's working in those the lives of these new converts. And God is meeting them in their level of faith. And so right now, we I pray for you. I pray for the people that are coming into the ministries, coming into your churches, coming into your ministries. I pray right now that you will that God will give you the manna from heaven to be able to give them the light that you cut it up in the right size, and that when they get it, it will be. It will satisfy their soul. It can't be, uh, it can't be watered down, muddied water that's been four or five times gurgitated that you've muddied with just disgusting stuff. It needs to be the pure milk of the word. Amen. And so you want, you just go back to the Lord, say, Lord, I'm, let's go back to Psalm 23. Let me give him Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Hallelujah. Let him quicken to you. Let it, you get a fresh revelation of Psalm 23. I tell you that uh, there's more so much contained in Psalm 23 about our covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord is so easy going to make it easy for you pastors. It's not hard. Don't let them try to put that armor. And if they have put it on you, just take it off and get back to the things that you have proved. It's got to come down. I've proved the blood. I've proved the covenant meal. Amen. I've proved the power of the name of Jesus. I've proved praying in the Holy Ghost. I've proven the spirit of the Lord uh, and the anointing and how to place a demand from the Holy Ghost for a power to set the captives free. I, I, there's some things that I've proved. I've proved that I can worship. As I worship him, the heaven comes down. I have proven certain things. Hallelujah. And I know that you have proven things. And if some of those you haven't proven, I encourage you, you want to be sharpening those weapons of your warfare because this is where you're not going to be able to fight in this hour with natural guns. And I just, 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 it makes me vomit to think that you are giving people guns to keep your protection and not giving them the blood of Jesus and their protection and the, the authority that we've been given in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus to protect protect us and soothe them in the full armor of God. And I re uh, you should repent if you are giving them anything but that first and building them up that because those guns won't protect them. They'll get them in more prob more situations because they have them than because they don't have them. And so we just repent right now that we are give giving them anything that is not fully proven by you and your word, Lord Jesus. We are not going to give them natural weapons. We're going to give them the spiritual weaponry. And so, Father, what? who are we? Are we his people? Are we his holy? Are we his people? Have we come to that? That we're going to be preaching and giving guns, giving licenses for guns and, and teaching on that? What? Lord Jesus. What? We repent, I repent on behalf of my sisters and brothers 
that trust in that more than the name of Jesus. I, I really do believe in God. In God we trust. And so, Lord, we thank you for the restoration. We thank you that you are a wall of fire about us. And you are the glory and the lifter of our heads. And we are not going to go to Egypt's ways, but we are going to look to you and we're going to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. You promised, you said that Pharaoh was going to fall. You said that Egypt was going to come down. You compared Egypt in chapter 31 to fallen Assyria. And you even said to take up a parable against Egypt and make a lament against Pharaoh. Amen. And you promised these, these countries are going to come down. It is not me that's judging them. It is your glory that is going to take them out. And so, Father, I'm not against any nation. I love all people like you do. But your glory, your glory itself is going to bring judgment and conviction and things, good things and bad things. And so, Lord, thank you for this time with my sisters and brothers. I thank you, Father, for this restoration that you're bringing. I tell you. We are never too dead for a resur res resurrection. Amen. Your city's never too far gone. You can start to make decrees and de declarations over your, your city. Hallelujah. It could be a city of refuge, but it, it, it let's call it a city that's going to be built up. Hallelujah. That we're not just going to take people in, but they are truly going to be recovered and restored. Hallelujah. Not just for refuge, but for refuge restoration to send them back out to be world changers hallelujah that they're going to come in to tampa bay one way and they're going to build and they're going to plant and they're going to they're going to change this nation hallelujah amen and and so make get your confession over tampa bay is the holy bay of the holy spirit right we call it tampa bay bay of the holy spirit what are you calling your bay what are you calling your city this is the bay area we're the bay of the holy spirit st pete clearwater sarasota tampa bay we are the bay of the holy spirit and he is going to be poured out like never before in this area on all flesh amen and so i thank you for being with me as we kind of went through some of these as we heard the holy spirit get your confessions correct in what you're saying amen because you know when the prophet came in um i think it was in kings and remember the story about the lepers and I didn't know I was going to talk about it, but the story about the lepers who, uh, the, the, the word was that the famine was going to be turned in like a day. And um, the king, the prophet spoke it, and the king and his, the man next to him said that if that could, that couldn't happen. And he said, and the prophet said, well, it is going to happen, but you will not be able to eat it. You will see it, but you will die because you, you did not receive the prophet word. And so you can say, this is impossible. You know, people say it's going to be restored. Oh, it's impossible. I've seen this. No. You could be, you could be the, you could be a prophet and not receive the prophet's word of restoration because you've been living and, 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 and you've wearied in well doing. And, and the prophet said, you're not going to see it. And look what he, God used. What did he use? Did he use some strong, burly men? He used two lepers. Two lepers that everybody despised and, and separated themselves. And they said, why sit we here till we die? We're going to just throw our hands in the, in, in the mercy of, of this pe these people. And it, when those two lepers, isn't it wonderful? He uses the most unlikeies. In, in the space of six hours, amen, in the space of twilight to twilight, right? 12 hours, twilight to what? Twilight to the sunrise. The, and they, they said, why sit we here till we die? Let's get up and go. 
And as they went, these two lepers, so it doesn't mean you have a, a notable character that people even know who you are. They were lepers, but by faith, they said, well, I said, we're going to go. And they got there. They found all this spoil. As they moved, the enemy came and scared, uh, the, the, the God moved and scared those enemies out of all of their wealth and scared them and sent them in another direction. And they all left all that spoil. And the, the, those lepers went in. They're eating here and they're eating here. And they're like, wait a minute. This isn't right. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're hungry, but we can't eat all this food. We can't take all this stuff. Hallelujah. We need to come go back. And, and you know, the, the people, when they went back, they didn't even, you know, people won't even believe that you're going to be prospered. They will say, there's no way we're going to carry our beans. We're going to hide. We're going to hoard up. We're storing everything up. How can it be that this is going to be over? How can it be? They won't even believe you, but you've got to know that you've heard from God that he's going to restore and recover, that you're going to recover all. And those lepers, they, they came back and those people that did not believe the report of those of that prophet, they got to, they saw it, but they died. They were trampled over when all of that prosperity came and they were trampled over because they did not believe the prophet's word. Amen. So I encourage you. Find where you are. I believe in the res restoration. I believe God's going to restore because even though we go through t situations, God always is just wanting us to turn back to him. He said, you know, because of Egypt's pride in chapter 29, he says, I'm your enemy because you said that I'm doing these things because you said the Nile River is mine. And, um, and it says, and it says, and I, it, you will be a lowly nation and never again a great, great enough to rise above your neighbors. That was a word that he, God spoke through Ezekiel against Egypt in, in chapter 30. Uh, he said, lament, cause you're going to, I'm going to break the arm of Egypt. I am the enemy of Pharaoh and I will break both of his arms. And, and along with it will be broken. And so, um, and then in, in 31, he compared Egypt to uh, Syria and uh, he made, said to make a parable and lament for Pharaoh. Things are going to happen. Jeremiah in, in chapter 32, Jeremiah 32 comes at that time period in, in, if you, if you had the Ezekiel time period, chapter 32, where God gave me chapter 32 for the health and cure is late linked right in that, that situation in that, in that time period when he told Jeremiah to buy the field and there's going to be a period. Amen. And so you may be holding that word and hidden it in your heart. Hallelujah. But there is a time where you're coming out. Amen. And what you have hidden in your heart and what you have sown. Hallelujah. And you've held on to amidst all the odds against the words men have said. You've held on believing God's going to restore that situation. I tell you, you're going to see it this year. You're going to see it be in, before the end of the calendar year. Amen. For the righteous. Amen. That's you. So thank you for being with me. I went on longer than I expected tonight. Um, again, you can follow me tomorrow. We'll talk again from chapter 33 about Ezekiel being the watchman because he talked about it earlier in the chapter, called him initially to be the watchman. But then he says again, you are a watchman. So you, when you started initially as a prayer person, when God said for you to raise up a hedge, a prayer work or whatever it was in the initial stages, he called you to watch. But again, he's calling you. I've got another level for you to watch. So it may be for the nations. You will be starting to pray over nations and he's calling you to lay your hands on nations and to prophesy over, over nations, or he's going to release your words to go to nations.
and to be able to speak comfort to a nation. Hallelujah. He is doing a new thing. And he is, he is, you're establishing it. what happened with a faithful steward. As he was faithful, I'm saying to you, you've been faithful. So you're not where you, when you are faithful with a little, he gave you more. Amen. So when you were faithful with the city, he said one talent, he gave you 10. Amen. He gave the, the one with five talents. He gave them five cities and tens. I have to look at the story. But he, there was an increase. The one that hid it, he didn't get anything. But the one that that did something with the talents. And, it, and again, it's God that's doing it. It's not you being able to track all this by social media. Come on, you're not going to keep up at such a fast pace. You cannot keep up with all that God's doing. You have got to just do your prophetic act, your prophetic words. Hallelujah. Just as he's got other church people, the church of Jesus Christ speaking their words and prophesying at their place on the wall. Amen. Hallelujah. Just do your part today. Amen. So I pray right now as we close, Lord, I pray that you would stir up the gifts, stir up these warriors, stir, stir up these men and women of God that you have called to the kingdom for such a time as this, as they yield to the shift, as they yield as the shift, you said the shift, there's a shifting right now this month. Lord, I thank you as you shift to yield, to get into, if it's a geographical change, if it's a job change, if it's a, a ministry tweak, if it's a, if it's a, a shift, totally out from one place to another, Lord. We want to, Lord, help us, Holy Spirit, to yield to your Holy Spirit's movement. And we thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord will be our strength in this hour. And I thank you, Lord, for the quickening of the Holy Spirit upon all the people that watch tonight, that they will take hold of these words and it will burn in their heart, that they will be, it'll be a fire like it was in Jeremiah as we eat these words. They are sweet, but then they will start to do a work in us and start to perform and start to cleanse, start to permeate and start to push out the dross and push out those attitudes and push out the unconscious sin so that we can be new vessels for this uh, uh, with this new wine skin and the new wine for this hour and I thank you for it and I give you the glory for it and give you the honor and the praise for all that you've done in our lives we are grateful father we are so grateful for all that you have done for us, Lord, for the supernatural things that you have done, the miracles that you have performed for us personally, Lord, for the things that prayers, secret petitions of our hearts that we prayed for and you've answered. I bless this Apostle Amos today as she's on. Lord, I pray that you will minister to her a quickening, Lord by the Holy Ghost. Lord, for those that have been watching, Lord, I pray that you will minister that quickening power that you will speak to them tonight in their dreams and give them vision for this hour. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. We praise you, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Father, for just allowing us to be a doorkeeper, Father to open the door for people to come to you. You are all together lovely. You are the fierce of 10,000. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you there is no one that compares to you, my beloved, there is no love like your love, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are altogether lovely and altogether desirable. You are 
the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Speak to our hearts tonight. Change us, Lord. Rearrange our hearts for this hour, for the time is short, and we want to be found faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. I love you. Hope to see you if you're local to come sometime to one of our services or let us know where you're coming from, what church you belong to, or if there's anything we can pray for you. God, I tell you, he He sends people to you. I, I pray for the most unusual people and I'll call them out of the blue and God is so faithful. There have been people I've called and God, will, they've had strokes, God it, they knew they needed help. I, they're just, don't, when God puts somebody on your heart, don't just pray a few minutes, but make the call. People are in desperate, pastors are in desperate times. The sheep are being attacked. The shepherds are being attacked. The devil is his last hurrah <laughs> because he's coming down. Amen. Already been finished through the blood of Jesus. And so reach out to those people. Make that phone call. Don't just text them. Call them. Let them hear your voice. You can hear a lot just by hearing somebody's voice. Amen. So I encourage you to reach out. If some, God puts somebody on your heart, we just don't know the mental pressure. People are cracking under the pressure that is on a mental pressure. Um, you know, God is, uh, his yoke is easy. His burden is light, but the devil, he puts pressure. And Jesus, our Jesus, he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. There's people oppressed by the devil. Amen. And so he's given you the keys, the authority to, to set the captives free. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me. I appreciate you staying on long tonight with me. I love you. Thank you for being with me. Happy Father's Day, those of you that I know we had wonderful, we have wonderful fathers in the faith, and we thank God for the, I thank God for every one that's ministered the word of God to me through the years. We thank you for the great men and women that have stirred us up. Amen. Don't you thank God for the people that have ministered the word of God. We don't, for, we don't forget them. We thank God for them. I thank God for the pastors and churches I got to go to and the pastors that I served under. I could go back anytime. Some of them are in heaven now, but we could go back anytime. So pray for your pastors. If you're not a pastor and you have a, go along to a church, I encourage you pray for your pastors. Pray for the leadership. Pray for, for the protection of your body. Amen. Because there are just, there's a lot of attacks coming against the body period. Amen. But we have overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives even unto death. Amen. God bless you. You guys have a great, great night. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Uh, amen. God bless.